Welcome to Three Crosses Ferry Company. I'm Caleb, and we're gonna be trimming Dally today. Dally needs a trim really, really, really bad. And one of the things I want you to look at and notice right off the bat is how deep the commissures are. How far down in the hoof the frog is. And then if you notice, the frog doesn't look overly healthy. And that has a lot to do with the fact that the frog needs contact with the ground. It needs to be stepping and moving and being basically massaged by the ground as the horse moves. When the hoof gets this long, it's unable to do that and therefore it doesn't grow properly. And that's why it doesn't look extremely healthy here. Secondly, take a look at how far forward the heels are. This is a common problem with, with horses that become overgrown. A lot of people think, oh, they're overgrown because they're long. That's correct. But one of the problems is, is that a horse doesn't grow down as much as it goes forward and down. So in order for us to fix this horse today, we're going to have to bring that whole hoof back underneath the, and put it back in the position that it's supposed to be in because it has moved forward. Camera. Now when I'm running my knife, I'm working off of several different guides to know how deep I can go. And a lot of folks have commented on this video. I had a little short yesterday that I did of just nipping this video and they saw this red right here in the tip of the frog. And I'm like, uh oh, the, the horse is gonna be sore, that's blood. That's not actually blood, that is um, solar bruising. And solar bruising, in this case, I believe is being caused by the extra pressure that's being exuded on the hoof capsule by that extra long toe. So for every quarter of an inch that that toe grows long, it puts an extreme amount of pressure on the rest of the hoof. It puts an extreme amount of pressure on all the bones, ligaments, tendons, muscles, the whole nine yards. And so it's paramount that we get this foot back underneath her and get that pressure off of there. And that's why she's gonna feel better when we get done. It's not so much that the toe is long as it is it's exuding pressure on the rest of the hoof and the rest of the horse's anatomy. You'll also notice right here on that lateral side, there is a what looks to be like an old abscess. That's what I uncovered there in that heel is that looks like there was an old abscess right there. You'll notice that the bruising disappears as we go further into the hoof. When I started shoeing almost eight years ago, it took me a long time to be able to read the hoof. Reading the hoof is so important in our job because if you don't, you'll cut them too short and bleed them or not cut them short enough. And then we have a bunch of problems like sore tendons, sore foot, tripping, things like that, that cause the horse harm as well. So it's a fine line between not taking enough and taking too much. And our goal is not to have her lame when she gets done. We want this horse to walk off sound. And she did, we didn't take too much. She wasn't sore at all and went out and went right back out in the pasture and was feeling way better when we got done here. If you continually trim a horse too short, they're going to get to the point that they don't want to see you anymore. And I have dealt with this in a couple of cases where I had horses that had been mishandled at some point in the past and hated seeing the farrier. And it took us some time to get to where they trusted me, but once they realized that I wasn't gonna cause them pain, they were, they were just super gentle and kind. Horses are one of the most trusting animals in the world. Doesn't mean they're okay. perfect, but they are one of the most trusting animals in the whole wide world. Again, we're gonna get rid of some of the flair here get uh, get rid of all that extra hoof that's sticking out in front of her. And this, this is going to help that horse not have pressure on those tendons. And it's, again, it's all about getting that foot back to where it would naturally. You'll notice I'm only rasping about the bottom quarter of the hoof. This is 
generally where your flare starts is in the bottom quarter of the hoof. If you look at the top quarter and the angle there, that's the natural angle for that horse. Now I'd like to take a minute real quick and do a quick shout out to Hoof It USA. They're now a sponsor of ours. They're a great company to work with and they make these hoof stands right here. And they're not just for farriers. If you guys have bad backs and it's hard for you to get under your horse and clean his hooves out, these are the perfect hoof stand for you. And if you're a farrier, they're a lifesaver. I can do two or three more horses a day just by using one of these cradle hoof posts combination. And we're going to start on the other foot now. Now, again, starting by cleaning out the hoof, getting things uncovered. This is the, the basics of being a farrier is figuring out just oh, getting to where we can see what's going on. The interesting thing is when people ask me like, how did you know to cut that deep? The number one marker or reference point in the hoof is the frog. The frog dictates where the rest of the hoof will line up. So if I can find where the frog is, where, where it's supposed to be, then I know how far basically I can cut into that hoof. Now I watch a lot of other things, color, texture, um, things like that that help me know if I'm going too deep or too close. But that frog is allowing me to cut this hoof far more aggressively because I know where my frog is. It is super, super important to pay attention to where that frog is. If, if you look, you can see that I'm not cutting below where the frog, the, the tip of the frog is. I'm not cutting below that. If I was to cut below that frog, I would definitely make this horse sore. But I know that I can take out all this sole because the frog is below that sole. Now, when I run my knife, again, you'll see some solar bruising, but as I start to get further and further in, that solar bruising starts to disappear. And again, there's a perfect angle that you can see. See, I'm above that frog, the tip of it anyway. Now, the frog is going to grow. By the time we come back in eight weeks, this hoof is gonna be so much healthier. It's going to look better because the horse has now been walking on its hoof as it should so that the frog is getting you used. My, uh, my buddy about got stepped on right there. He was filming for me and she kind of shifted her weight and stepped over and about stepped down on top of him. Just look at all that hoof that's coming off there. When I started, this would this used to make me super nervous. I was I was not I wasn't very confident with my nippers, and and part of it is it's super super cheap to take hoof off. It gets really expensive to put it back on, and I haven't had real good luck with putting hoof back on. Again, you can see some bruising in there, but you'll notice it kind of disappears as I get further into that hoof wall. It's amazing how much hoof I was actually able to take off at one time. Sometimes what happens is guys will shorten the cycle and do them shorter increments and take little bits off at a time. Uh, some guys will do it all at once. I kind of favor the latter approach. I, I don't like to mess around with it. If the hoof needs to come off, I take it off. Um, if you wait, like say you short, you know, you take off a little bit and then wait two weeks or three weeks or four weeks and then take off a little more and take off a little more, I've noticed sometimes you never quite catch up. So the horse stays kind of in a bad spot. It's better than it was, but it never gets right. better. It just kind of, you kind of get to a point where it's growing enough that you never get, get the foot back to where you really want it. So I take off as much as I possibly can in one go without making the horse sore. And then next time when it's toughened up a little bit, we'll probably be another session where we fine tune what we did today. 
When a hoof is this long, I like to call them hack sessions because we literally hack through the hoof. You can see that I'm using my nippers a ton, and that's because there's so much hoof here, it's easier for me to go in and nip it out with the nippers and then come back with the rasp and finish it up. Now you can see where I've nipped around the hoof, hoof wall, and that's your flare, that's your distortion. And now we're gonna rasp to meet the rest of the hoof and make it make it uh, even with the top two thirds of the hoof. Now you can see right there on that where I'm rasping right now, that is where some distortion is. You can actually see how it dips away from the hoof wall and starts to go away from the actual hoof. It starts to to move away from the the, uh, the hoof as a whole, and that's flare. Flare is caused. Uh, by lack of pressure and then if you have a horse that has like contraction like it, it heels rolling underneath or one heels compressed this is the heel that is compressed is taking all the weight the heel that's not is the flare well i hope you enjoyed the video like and subscribe let us know what you think in the comments we'll see you next time